Hi, welcome to Seymour's World on Think Tech Hawaii. We have a wonderful show for you today. Uh, I have to say that uh, a few weeks ago, I, w I got very involved in the Wounded Warriors Project. I felt that I needed to do something for them. And as you remember, we, have Dave, we had Dave Livingston on our show, and then we had Bob McDermott, and they kept telling me about the Navy League. You've got you've, you've to see what they do with the Navy League. And I did, and I decided that we should get involved. And Sue and I joined the Navy League, mainly because of the Wounded Warriors Project, because I felt we needed to help in some way or whatever way we could, and I'm working on that as part of my foundation. So I decided to ask Jane Ferreira, who is the executive director of the Navy League, to join us. And thank you so thank much you for coming. Thank you very much. Thank you for asking me and having me here. I, I, I just think it's, it's fascinating that here in Hawaii that um, you have approximately 2,000 members yes, in the Navy, Navy League. Correct. And you're supporting a, a, maybe up to 100,000 people here. Yes, exactly. And yet a lot of us in the, in the world that are not military, Mm -hmm. really don't even know much about it. So it's very important that we tell everybody what the Navy League does. So tell us a little bit about it. Well, the Navy League has three missions, to support those who serve and their families, um, to go to more as leaders through our youth leadership programs that we offer, um, and to communicate to our public and to our legislators the value of having, a free, having free and safe seas. And uh, your, your, your mission statement is doing that, but you do a lot more than that, obviously. It's all part of what we do. It's all, everything we do directly serves our mission statements in one way or the other. We're very focused on that, so we, we don't, you know, we keep very focused on our mission at all times. Well, the Wounded Warriors Project obviously is very close to my heart because, as you know, we have a program called Make Them Smile where right, we, exactly, play, yeah. we play music mm -hmm. and uh, we've been up to Tripler before to, to play and we see all those soldiers there and, boy, it's hard to keep a dry eye. It really uh, is, Jane. It's very, very difficult. There are amazing young men and women who have uh, sacrificed a lot and so it's important for us to be involved. And it's actually not the Wounded Warrior Project. That's a different program. Mm -hmm. Ours are Friends of Wounded Warriors, Windward Wounded Warriors. Tell us about it. That's the, um, the kids who are in the program at uh, Kanyohe Marine Base. So it's the Marines out there. Um, and they come from all over the Pacific because of the, the shifting in, in uh, numbers in places. Uh, now they have a lot of uh, kids that come in from Guam and Japan. Uh, maybe even Korea, that are within our PAC fleet or our AOR area of responsibility uh, for the Navy and the different services in Asia Pacific. So we will get uh, kids that come in who have special needs. And wounded warriors are those who are wounded, ill, or injured. So we have families that come in who have kids that have cancers or parents or families. So it's because healing is a family, is a family um, role and it's very important it's critical every part of that so it is a family and we we bring in the family to help support the person who is uh, sick or injured to get through the treatment that they need it's wonderful. I was at Shriners Hospital uh, just the other day, and we were playing, and there was um, a couple, and he was in his military uniform, and I asked him about him. We were, his child had just had some surgery mm -hmm. done at Shriners, and um, I asked him about it, and he, was, he talked about the Wounded Warriors Project as one of the projects that he himself feels it has been so beneficial in helping him keep his family together. You also work with the spouses, right? That's, yes, that's a big program. Yes, we work with the uh, spouses from the senior listed uh, down through the uh, lower listed ranks and the officers and um, we meet probably once a month to talk about how do we engage the the younger families to stay on top of what's happening with the Navy or the Marines or the Coast Guard so that they can kind of anticipate what's coming and no surprises and we just try to keep everybody informed and it's continuing education so it's a continuing effort on that. Wow. Tell us a little bit about yourself. How long have you been with the Navy League? I've been with the Navy League. I've been a volunteer for over 10 years, I think 12 now. Um, I was on the board a few years, three or four years as a secretary. And then when Bob uh, decided to go in a different direction, um, I was offered the position. And you took and it. And I took it. And it was, um, Bob had said, he said, Jane, this is a job you've been training for your whole life. And it is. I'm just very... Um, I'm so very satisfied and, and fulfilled by having this position. Well, uh, I know how hard you work because I see your emails coming back to me at 7 o'clock at night. So obviously you're in the office quite late. Yes. And, is it and a passion for you? It Jane? absolutely is a passion. And um, 
you know, a wise man once said, if you have a job you love, you'll never have a job. And that's the way I feel. That's the uh, way I feel. That is it's so just, terrific. It's a, it's a great mission, and I'm driven by the mission. And is your husband, do you have kids? And I'm husband? widowed, uh -huh. uh, but I do have three kids and three grandkids. Oh, um, my gosh. And everybody except my oldest son is here. The other one went to school in Portland and never came home. Um, but uh, so I'm lucky to have my kids and my grandkids here. And, and for me, I've been involved with kids and programs with cyber and science and, and those things for many years uh, before I joined the Navy League. So it's important for me that we always nurture the young uh, to help them know there is a future and they don't have to leave Hawaii and let them know the job paths that they can look into. And I help provide that information along with scholarship information so they can feel driven and motivated to stay home and have a career. Um, so now my grandkids are involved in the Hawaii State Science Olympiad or robotics programs, wow. then it is so even more fulfilling that wow. things that I've been doing for over a decade have come to fruition uh, in my own grandkids. Yeah, you see, that's where passion really helps because it just shows you the fulfillment that you get by following your passion. Absolutely. So the children are part of the Navy League's mission statement as well, helping the kids. Helping the those who serve and their families. So definitely the kids from that respect. Um, so when deployments come, when ships and subs come back from deployment, um, we, first of all, we buy the third watch, who's the guys that have to stay on the ship or sub dinner when they come back so everybody else can go home as much as possible. And, and sometimes, especially in the fall and Christmas, we will do little activities with the kids before they come home, whether it's making Christmas cards or something, saying, welcome home, mom, look forward to seeing you, dad, which is touching when these kids have been months without a parent, and that is impactful. And once you've been a part of that, you see the true impact on our kids and, and right. military families. Sorry, it's a real. Well, <laughs> once okay. you've been a part of it, it's no. you, you see it. Jane, we see it a lot in, uh, you know, separation and the anxiety that comes from Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Not, it's not just the spouse who is out at uh, out in in the field somewhere. It's really at home. It hurts too. And I know the kids and the the the, the spouses, whether it's male or female, have a tremendous tremendous burden to carry being alone. Um, uh, I work with foster kids, and I see that all the time. So I respect very very much how important it is. How do you handle uh, uh, women, for instance, who are without their husbands for four to six months, and you see their anxiety growing? How does the Navy League help them? Um, the Navy League will support the programs that will help them. We don't have the ability to, or the, or the, the um, professional structure to actually touch them at all or help them, but we can support the programs that do have that a direct effect. And you, so and you lead them towards those programs, or you? They you usually are led toward that. I have to say within the services, especially the Navy, and the, they just do a great job of reaching out to making sure the families of deployed people, uh, deployed, men, deployed men and women, um, they're, they're on track with them and they're making sure that um, they're okay. When somebody doesn't post on Facebook for a few days, they'll go out to the house and, that's and wonderful. see them and make wonderful. sure they're okay. So that's why these monthly meetings with the with the uh, senior leaders, uh, the spouses, is good to, to help touch that. And then I find out from them what the needs are from other organizations within it. So we try to help support them. Mm -hmm. We see so much PTSD is talked about. Uh, you know, and, and it's happening, of course, the military is where it, it all started, basically. That's where we understood where PTSD came from. I know uh, people that, whose fathers were in the, before Vietnam mm -hmm. wars, and now that, that is, it has come to being diagnosed, they say, you know, my dad's 82, but I remember, and that's what he went through when he came home from whichever war it was, so, um, or whatever conflict. So. Um, that just PTSD is just one part of it. There's just there's so much more that I think our services are really doing a good job in trying to get it addressed. And the VA, um, they're working hard. They they've seen their the errors of their ways. Let's say and and um, they they are trying really hard. I have to say. You know, um, uh, we've heard a lot on the news, of course, about the sensationalism of what's wrong with the VA. But I have to tell you, going up to Tripler Hospital as often as I do for my music program, I go there and I speak on the Holocaust all the time, mm -hmm. and uh, we have our, our foster kids program up there. They're a wonderful organization. They are so good to the people that are there. I'm not sure about how long appointments take, and I don't 
know if that's really what the case is, but people have to respect. It's a huge, huge organization, and I think that the, the VA is doing a, tr a tremendous job. They're, they're trying their best. They really are. And, um, you know, we're actually having the colonel from Tripler, who runs Tripler, uh, coming to our, uh, do a briefing with us. I believe it's on the 22nd. Yeah. So co go to our website, HonoluNavyLeague.org, and uh, attend an event. You'll see an invitation out there if you want to come talk to the gentleman who actually runs Tripler. Um, then, then come out and join us. Yeah, yeah, I just might do it. They invite me every year to come and speak, and I do it because I honestly believe that the, the military here in Hawaii has done a great job in making sure that the soldiers are uh, understanding of what and the, the past seamen. is. And the seamen. And the seamen. Yes, and, and the seamen. Right. Like, yeah, yeah, I speak at yeah. Koharu every year, so <laughs> it's, um, it's really terrific. Now, the Navy League it really works with all the other services, well, too. Well, our core is... Um, the Navy, the Marines, the Coast Guard, and the, and the Sea Services, everybody on the waterfront. But we are a service of one. Um, in fact, once a month there is a, uh, a briefing. It's not a briefing. It's um, a meeting of all the senior enlisted leaders from all branches of the service. They all get together to talk about, OK, this is what's going on, and this is how we're addressing this. And it's, it's phenomenal. I'm there as a support role. And uh, it's, it's tremendously helpful. It's just an amazing. Um, event where they can talk about what's happening because now we have people living amongst each other. In the old days, you'd have Navy living Navy, Army living Army. Now we have Navy, Coast Guard, Army all living on the same street. Mm -hmm. That's just the way they're moving it. So um, it's important for them to know what's going on in each of their services. So they can help each other best practices. But the, but what the Navy League do, does is a wonderful glue. It, it provides that, that uh, reaffirmation that everything is okay and that there's a place to go to in case there's a problem. And I think that's one of the reasons that I was drawn towards the Navy League. We try to be the resource for I that. I know. It's wonderful. Well, we have to take a short break in a minute, but I want to bring some photos up if we can, and you can tell us a little bit of, about what those pictures okay. are. Okay. Here's the first one. Okay. That was at the... Band concert, I believe. No, this was at Sailor of the Year event, uh, where we celebrate um, the top sailors from, as Admiral Harris says, from Hollywood to Bollywood and penguins to polar bears. It's the top sailors, and it's like five to seven from shore, five to seven from sea command. So they are these are the best and brightest kids we have in that whole arena. It's it's very motivating and it's it's very touching to see these kids who have done so much at such a young age isn't that wonderful yes. let's see the next one and this is with our wounded warriors this is at the honolulu country club who their foundation um supports the wounded warriors and fifty thousand dollars last year and they'll um wow we'll, we'll hopefully we'll get another 50 this year but it's uh they've done a great job in supporting uh the, the wounded warrior program and that's with the colorful lay on his chaplain jensen he actually is the uh the gentleman who kind of keeps it all together he's he's a volunteer wow we've got one uh, time for one more what's this one? Oh, and this is uh i believe a sea services this is a few years ago because my hair was really short and i was <laughs> a little thinner but um i like you the way you are <laughs> forget the forget yeah, you, that stuff you just, yeah you just have to own it and um <laughs> so this is presenting the one of the uh, awardees a uh, training certificate of a thousand dollars for our training company i used to work for wow well you know uh, Jane, I have to say, the, uh, we, I want to talk about all the programs. I love the Toys for Tots program. I was involved in RIMPAC as a vendor. I still am, actually, to the military. My, one of my companies sells okay. products to the military. And when RIMPAC comes in, we bring in container loads. You know, it's a, it's a big, big deal for us. Uh, and it's what, every few years? Two, every two years. Every two Tw years. 2018 is the next one. Yep, yep. And it's, it's huge, and it's terrific. And I can buy a new pair of shoes every time I, <laughs> <laughs> I do a RIMPAC deal. And uh, I you, I'll bet. <laughs> I, oh yes, and you guys are involved in that. And I want to talk a little bit about it. I want the the uh, our audience, and we have about six thousand people who watch our show. I, I want our audience to understand that the military is not just guns, and it's not just people going out there to fight. The support system necessary for the military is huge. It it's is. absolutely essential that what you do for the Navy, that Navy League, is absolutely the most wonderful thing that happens behind the scenes. So we're going to talk a we're little well bit more about it. We're well-kept secret. Uh, it's terrific. Well, we need to take a short break. I'm Seymour Kazimersky on Seymour's World. We'll be back in a minute. 
Hello everyone, I'm DeSoto Brown, the co-host of Human Humane Architecture, which is seen on Think Tech Hawaii every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. And with the show's host, Martin Despang, we discuss architecture here in the Hawaiian Islands and how it not only affects the way we live, but other aspects of our life, not only here in Hawaii, but internationally as well. So join us for Human Humane Architecture every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii. Living in this crazy world, so caught up in the confusion, nothing is making sense for me and you. Maybe we can find a way, there's got to be a solution, how to make a brighter day. Hi, welcome back to Seymour's World on Think Tech Hawaii. What a wonderful show. We have Jane Ferreira, who's executive director of the Navy League. Now, how many of you around the world have heard of the Navy League? Up until a, a few weeks ago, I had not either. I may have heard the name, but I never understood what they did. And I think we're learning so much about what is behind the scenes. What happens on base when a spouse is off somewhere for a six-month deployment or whatever that may be? And the Navy League, a membership of 2,000 people, just here in Hawaii, just in Hawaii. Can you imagine around the world? They are uh, one of the best support systems we can have. So Jane, thank you for joining us today. Again, it's really, really me. wonderful. One of my favorite programs is the Toys for Tots campaign. Can you talk about that a little we bit? We do a tournament, a uh, golf tournament. Um, I hear I'm invited for you that. You are invited yes. uh, in December for Toys yes. for Tots. And we play usually at the Navy Marine Golf Course and we have the uh, Toys for Tots coordinators come out and it's a very low cost tournament for the golfers because it's a toy harvest. We do it so that we can turn over lots and lots of toys and that every every one of the kids in the military who, who don't have a toy gets a toy. And believe me, it is it is really amazing how many toys we get. Is like it truly that you get thousands of toys? Yeah, we get like a truckload. A truckload? Yeah, we, we rent a truck every year and um, we load it up. We have very, Hawaii is very benevolent, and Toys for Tots is a, is a program I think everybody has heard of and knows about. So we, it's, it's a very fun tournament at Navy Marine. We have a lot of fun. And uh, you do this tournament, is, you do a second tournament. We do, right? actually. Our next tournament is coming up August 4, which is at the Kaneohe Marine Base at the Clipper Golf right. Course. And that's our, our fundraiser. Um, but it's, it's a f lot of fun. We have uh, a lot of golfers. We'll have officers as well as enlisted come out. We'll have our wounded warriors playing with us. And um, it's a lot of fun and excitement. It's a day out uh, uh, on that course. And the back nine of that course is probably one of the most highly rated in the world for the view. It wow. just, it's a great course. And you're golfing down that back nine along the coastline at K Bay. I mean, it's, it is beautiful. It's, I, it's a very fun day. I have to tell you the truth. I play there almost every week. I love that course. Isn't it's that, my favorite course. And isn't the back nine yes, just amazing? Yes. Yep. Hole 14, 15, <laughs> 16, and 17, they're my favorite. Yep. And, you know, I, I take so many pictures of it when I'm there, and I send it to my family. They are buried in snow in the wintertime <laughs> or rain and all that sort of stuff. And I say, this is what I'm doing today. That's and right. There's a picture of the sand and the ocean, and <laughs> yep. we're playing golf at Cape Bay. It's absolutely fabulous. Wonderful. Tell me about another some of the other things that you guys are doing. Uh, well, um, we have a year-long we have a year-long schedule that we do. We start with our annual meeting, which is in January, that kind of uh, lets our membership know what we've been doing, what we have planned for the next year. We vote in new officers uh, or, you know, that are on the board. Um, we do Pacific Fleet, Fleet Sailor of the Year that we do uh, in March, usually. And like I said, those are, the, those are the kids that are the best and brightest, the top for ship and shore commands. And we bring them in and their spouses, and they're here for a week, and the Navy League, has all kind of activities for the spouses because where do you put them up? Um, they usually at the at the Holikoa, usually wow. almost all the time. We the, the middle the Navy takes care of that. The Navy, we do it in partnership with the Navy. That's they wonderful. take care of some things and we take care of some things. Um, but they wouldn't do it without you. It takes the Navy League to actually make this happen. On the scale that we do it, I mean yes. they they all they all go to a luau and they uh, go to Diamond Head and they have so many activities while 
the service members are going through rigors to because you're a candidate and then you then they compete to see who mm -hmm. wins. Um, and so there's we do fun things for those who are not out oh, there on the terrific. rigors. And it, it we go through Iolani Palace every year and that is always such a an, nobody has any idea if you've never been to Hawaii they don't understand the background and it's such it's so good because it really helps them understand Hawaii and what we are and, and the the history and the legacy of, of the of the Hawaiians. Right. Right. Now you have something here. I'm going to put this up to the camera. Can you see that? That is our bridge application. Oh, and here. that's also online um, yeah. on HonoluNavyLeague.org under membership. And the bridge is, is the business networking group within the Navy League. So it's at a little higher rate of entry. But that this is the group of senior community leaders. Mm -hmm. And that extra amount that they contribute is is the oil that keeps our engine running every month. And you have to have it. It's the, we need to support that because our military is, first of all, in Hawaii, our military is a big piece yes, of our economy. Yes, it is indeed. And, and the second reason is it's, it's the, that's what's going to be here in case anything happens. We have to have the support mm -hmm. for the military. Now you have another one here. Okay, this is this a little bit too. of partners and patriotism. Yeah. We have some partners that have been, have been with us um, and their donations help really make the programs executed mm -hmm. at a high level. Um, so I'd like to say thanks to Matson, who's been with us mm -hmm. and is such a stalwart supporter, um, Hawaiian Electric, Hawaiian Electric, uh, Maui Electric, and Hawaii Electric Light Company. Mm -hmm. um, the Hawaiian Electric pro companies have been also very supportive. Um, McCabe Hamilton Rennie, who does for on the waterfront, um, thanks to uh, Tim Gard and his crew. Uh, Veterans United and Veterans United Home Loans have, are just amazingly uh, t so second skin to everybody. They're yeah. very giving. Um, JN Automotive Group is a new sure. partner this year, and they've been, they're have been they a great partner indeed. So if you want to buy a car or rent a car, let me know because they will actually make a donation back to us for any vehicle that you buy. Well, let me just say, Joe, uh, this is Seymour. I, I, know, I know you're on the list and you watch my shows because <laughs> I do get your notes. Uh, Lamborghini would be very nice. Thank you very much. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. Exactly. They have a, they, they have a lot of uh, yes, positions. Yes, he does. Yes. And then Medigold. Medigold, um, Whenever we have an event, and and I have kids and, and events in my office all the time, from cadets to cyber warriors to um, STEM Cub Scouts, there's always things going on in our office, and Medigold is always there to provide the drinks or the ice cream, Wonderful. whatever we need. We just did a, a family um, fun day um, on July 2nd, and that was a military appreciation day, and we did that in partnership with um, restaurant 604, which is on Arizona Memorial Drive, the old schooners, right by the Rainbow Marina there. And so it was a great event. There were so many families out there when the jumpers and the horsey rides. It was tremendous. Wow. So thanks to Restaurant 604 for, for being now, a part of that. I was told that I have to get involved in the American Patriot Dinner. The American Dinner. Patriot. That is, that is our that. big legacy event. That is where we recognize a military and a community leader for what they've done. So it, we've had Dave Carey, and we've had Colonel Bates. Mm -hmm. um, we've had, um, I didn't write my list of all my past ones. Last year it was Shelly Wilson and um, uh, our own tag, uh, General, General um, well, Wong, I believe. I mean, but there's, it's always something that we're trying and to do. And that's a big dinner, It right? is a big dinner. It's a black tie affair. It's right. going to get to Hilton this year. and. Um, this year, the awardees are Jennifer Sabas and uh, General Bramlett, wow. uh, which is Army, and, and uh, two very significant people who have impacted Hawaii. So we try to recognize those who have, have supported our community. And like that's just, it's a, it's a great event. And, it's, and uh, we'll look for that. It'll be on our website very shortly. Now, I'm assuming Pearl Harbor Day is a big day for you as Pearl well. Pearl Harbor is a big day. Um, we're, we're, there's so many things that are going on when it's a Pearl Harbor Day or a, or a Veterans Day or Memorial Day. Whenever it's an event in history, yes, everybody is um, is involved and on site. And, and there's so many events usually in every day you have to try to get to. Uh, but yeah, we try to be out there and represent. Because we're all about recognizing and celebrating. Those who have served are serving and their families. I mean, it's you have you have to recognize and celebrate at every opportunity. So I, I when you're out there and you see somebody in uniform or 
please tell them thanks and let them know they're important to you. You know, we, we have a tendency now to recognize more and more of, of what the military does for us. And I have something I do at Starbucks every single time. If there's a military person behind me, I always say, I'm buying your coffee for you. You know, it's just something that I like Absolutely. doing because it's a nice thing to do. Uh, you, you'll see the airlines, for instance, are also recognizing the military. They board first on the aircraft mm -hmm. now. And I, I think those are things we, we need to see. You yep. said to me that you have something special to read. Oh, I, there was something that I, I got this morning. Um, this is something that uh, our Chief of Naval Operations, uh, Admiral John Richardson, uh, was on a, a Chicago show. This is something he said, and this kind of sums up the importance of why we do what we do. The United States is a maritime nation, and Hawaii is an island in the middle of the ocean, you know, on our own. And he said, over half our trade comes to and from the United States by sea and to Hawaii. Look around your house, look around your neighborhood. Half of that stuff comes to us from sea as consumers. Similarly, so many of our jobs are tied to an economy that leaves our shores on ships and goes overseas for another somebody else to buy or to export. That is what your Navy League protects. That is what your Navy protects, and that's what the Navy League right. supports. So your Navy is out there for you all the time. So that is that is huge. And when you think that less than one percent of our population serves, that tells you the significance for that one percent to serve the other millions, you know, and protect You're us. Absolutely right. So that is that is huge. So we've got a hundred ships on any given day that are forward deployed, protecting those sea lanes with our products on them, protecting our prosperity, protecting our ability to get those goods, and protecting those jobs that contribute to the global economy and securing our shores. Wow. And that is that is very profound. I mean, yeah. that is what it's all about. They're protecting us and our, and our commerce, not just us as um, in case uh, out of harm's case, way, yeah, but, of but our economy and our prosperity. Jane, uh, you're going to have a lot of people that are watching this show and saying, you know what, I want to do something. I want to volunteer. I want to give money. Could you repeat very slowly how they get in touch? Um, HonoluluNavyLeague.org. HonoluluNavyLeague.org. Uh, you can email me directly at NavyLeagueJane at gmail.com, and I'll be happy to reach out and meet with you and see what kind of support meets with your, with your what you'd like to do, whether you would like to volunteer, whether you'd like to um, come to an event, would you like to sponsor something. Uh, the golf tournament coming up, if you have a company that would like to be out on one of the tees with our golfers, give me a call. We'll be happy to have you have, as a whole sponsor, or if you have something you'd like to donate for a raffle or a team prize. I want to make sure what we do is good for you too. I will never say just write me a check because I need your money. That's the truth. However, you have to make sure it's good for you as well as good for me. So, Terrific. so please, you know, if you want to get involved and you want to talk about how this impacts our community and our service members, let me know, and I'll be happy to give you as many examples as you'd like. Well, Jane, I'm sorry to tell you, but we're out of time. <laughs> and I have to say, you have been just a wonderful guest. Well, thank you. You are absolutely full of passion about what you do, and it just transcends everything. And I see people looking at you on air and saying, wow. And I just uh, I just have to say, you're. Uh, it's just not a wonderful organization, but you are credit to the Navy League. Well, thank you. I'm. I'm I'm driven by the mission and I what we do. I can see that. I can see it. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank, and thank you, Seymour. Thank you for, for telling us. our world, our, the little world of Seymour's world, that, uh, that the Navy League is something we should really not just be cognizant of, but somehow be a part of. I right. think it's very important. Yep. Help us keep on doing what we're doing. And that's exactly right. So, my friends, uh, we've learned a little bit more about the Navy League and the support system behind our military personnel around the world. I thank you very much for joining Seymour's World today. I hope to see you in our next episode, which I think will be in two weeks from now. Aloha from Seymour's World on ThinkTech Hawaii.